So forcing will not work, and that's why New Year's resolution will, will not work. When you think about it, it's a stupid name to be given. New Year's resolution it should be New Year's goals, not New Year's resolu resolution. I'm going to resolve to be the better version. I know you're thinking it's that time of year again, New Year. It's time to go and fix all those things I haven't fixed and become that great person that I've never managed to become so far. However, the reality is, is that people give up their New Year's resolutions. Uh, I used to go to a gym many years ago, and in that gym, very commercial gym, it would have a massive increase of people in January. So go from being easy going in December, and January would be packed, February would be packed, March would be packed, and then in April it started to thin out, and by May we're back to the way we were before. And that, to be quite honest with you, is the way that gyms basically make money, especially if they can get you up front with a six-month or one-year contract, and then you only turn up for a few months. It's profit, profit, profit all the way. So what goes wrong? Why is it that people go to the gym and give up after two or three months? Why is it that people diet for a month to give it up? Why is it that people take up that course of study and give it up? Why is it that you are sitting here watching this video and thinking, how the hell am I going to make 2023 better than 2022 the aspiration is simple enough of course is that human beings were not as efficient as we want life is complex we want to achieve many things but what's holding us back why do we fall off i mean strictly speaking you could create a habit of 21 days surely you could just list out 10 habits and create 10 new ways forward in 2023 within a few weeks say this month I'm focusing on training, next month I'm focusing on diet, following month I'm going to focus on studying more, following month I'm going to focus on, on uh, you know, uh, uh, making more money, next month I'm going to focus on learning cooking, etc. But why can't we learn like that? A machine could learn like that, but humans don't seem to be able to, don't seem to, be able to learn like that. And the reason why is quite simple. We have a thing called the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Now, your conscious mind up here has all the free will. It makes the choices. But the subconscious mind, which is down there somewhere, it has the beliefs, it has the conditioning. Early in life, you're conditioned and you develop beliefs, things like negative thinking, like I can't do it, I won't do it, I suck, I don't look good enough, I'm not charming enough, I can't make it, somebody else will always do better. All that conditioning is actually picked up early in life and it reinforced your life experiences. And Basically, if it's a question between I want to achieve something and I believe something else in my subconscious mind, the subconscious mind will always win. Another way of thinking of it is willpower. If I use willpower against imagination, imagination will always win. So the subconscious mind is a place of imagination, it's a place of beliefs, it's a place of feelings. And the conscious mind is where we have things like willpower and we have things like freedom of will and all this good stuff. But on its own, it will not get you where you want. What we actually have to think of in, in terms of, imagine a factory and the senior management team is you. You are maybe the MD sitting at the, at the desk, but you've got a factory. Now let's say it's a shoe factory. Are you going to make the shoe? No. You're going to call up the foreman and ask them to go and produce 10,000 shoes that day. Your job is to decide what the future of the company is and how to manage the company on a daily basis. The foreman's job is to organize all these different workers to do all these different things. Any CEO, any company, Sundar Pichel, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, don't think for one minute that they're doing everything. They are simply looking at the overall picture of that organization and other people are doing the Madhu thing. And we have to be the same with our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind has to work for us. Rather than us forcing ourselves, this is the reason why the three-week thing doesn't work. The problem people are doing is they're trying with the willpower too much. And the problem with willpower is willpower, will and power, takes a lot of energy. You have to keep willing and you have to keep powering. Imagine, for example, if you're driving your bike or driving your car, you have to flutter on the accelerator or the throttle open, okay? Now, to go and maintain, say, a speed of, say, 60 miles an hour, I have to keep the throttle open. The moment I drop the throttle, the speed comes down. Okay, so as long as I have my foot on the accelerator, I can keep at that speed. The moment I pull it down, I drop. And this is exactly what happens to people. For three weeks, they'll do something great, but then they'll start taking the pressure off. Let's say dieting, for example. 
let's say you're forcing yourself not to eat all those tasty things you want to eat. After a few weeks or a few months, you let up. What happens? You start cheating because you still have the value system that says, I want to eat junk food. Now, the only way to get off eating junk food is to change your values and possibly have a look at things like your dietary style. Maybe you're eating foods which are too high in calories. For example, you can pretty much eat what you want, what you want, but you can't eat when you want. You can eat a lot of food, but then maybe the next day you eat less food. Or you calorie count. You see how much food you can eat each day. It's simpler than you think, but you've got to move away from forcing. And this is a mistake people do. They force themselves into a diet and they lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds. And then they go back to the way they were. They force themselves to study, but then after a few weeks, again, they go back to the way they were. They force themselves to work hard or work smart or take up a course or do some uh, relationship management course or something or some activity with the family. And the moment they put their foot off the accelerator, they go back to where they were at the beginning. So forcing will not work. And that's why New Year's resolution will, will not work. When you think about it, it's a stupid name to be given. New Year's resolution should be New Year's goals, not New Year's resolution. Resolu I'm going to resolve to be the better version. Hasn't worked for the last, I don't know, so many years, decades, has it? Really? No, of course not. So how can you make change? And this is where I like to call the power of immersion comes in. If you want to change your life and you want to become a certain person, start thinking in terms of immersion. Now, you've probably heard of the law of attraction. I talk about sometimes this channel. Law of attraction is a great idea. The basic idea of law of attraction is whatever I think about, feel about, uh, visualize, and believe on a regular basis, I'll bring about. So if I keep thinking about something, visualizing, and believing it's happening, it will happen. Uh, some years ago, I saw a TV program where they had some uh, reality TV show where you have amateur housing investors and the professional who's overviewing them. And these, this couple were convinced that house number X or whatever it is, whatever house that was going to make a lot of money. And the, the professional was saying, this is a rubbish idea. He goes back in at the end of the episode. It's obviously very frustrating throughout the episode to look at these people and what a mistake they made. And that not only had they bought the property, but they flipped it at a massive profit. And I'm 100% convinced they did that because they had a total 100% belief, both consciously and subconsciously, that they're successful. And there's a lot to be said about having a total belief in what you're doing. That's the law of attraction. But what's the law of immersion? The law of immersion takes a bit further because the problem with the law of attraction, again, it's a bit like this, putting the phone on the accelerator. As long as I keep on visualizing, as long as I keep on dreaming about it, as long as I keep on thinking about forcing myself into this position in my life, I make progress. But the moment I take my foot off the accelerator, I regress. And how immersion works is immersion is reprogramming. So to some degree, the law of attraction is reprogramming, but it takes a lot of effort. Immersion takes practically zero effort. What is immersion? Immersion is simply look at what you want to become and start living that way. I'll give you an example. Some years ago, I was reading about dieting. Um, and the guy was suggesting that you put down the calories of what you need to maintain that new weight and that your body will eventually get there. It's an interesting concept. So if you're eating 3,000 calories a day, and you know that, say, you're wearing, weighing, say, 250 pounds, and you want to weigh 180, and you look at the TDE, that's like the, the total uh, calorie uh, expenditure of a person is 180 pounds, it says 2,000. Well, you see 2,000. Eventually, you're going to come down to 180 pounds. I don't know really if it will work 100%, but it's an interesting concept. But definitely, immersion works a bit like this. Let's say you want to become a musician. You want to be a professional pop star, for example. Something outrageous like that, like a pop star or a writer or a movie producer or something like that. You start living the life today that you would like to live all these years in the future. So what that means is you start thinking about how would they say, for example, want to be a pop star. What kind of life would they have? Okay. Well, they perform, they also record, they also play their instruments, they also have social media and they relate to other people in music. So you too should learn an instrument. You too should reach out to other people in the music industry, even at a very local level, at a social media level of other people in music. And go forward then and start uh, interacting more and more with people um, and developing that musical lifestyle. The only thing you lack is the super popularity. After a while, you'll find 
maybe not in the first six months or the first year or two, but after a few years, you get really good at whatever it is, singing, dancing, whatever you're doing. And you will develop many like-minded like people, develop a social media profile, maybe a YouTube channel, uh, try and get gigs somewhere, and you will actually start making progress as a musician or as a writer or anything else by starting to live today the life that you want to live tomorrow. Starting to live the life you want tomorrow today. It's a very simple concept of immersion. Where people fall down is they think that I will uh, believe I have a million dollars when I have a million dollars. No, you'll have a million dollars when you believe it. The belief must come first. So immersion means I'm living the life I want to lead today, even though it's a mini version, but it will eventually get bigger. I remember watching a video some years ago, Steve Jobs, he's talking about himself and Steve Wozniak and how they started Apple. Now, I don't know if this is 100% true or certain as a propaganda, but in the interview, he claimed that basically they were enthusiasts making PCs. And eventually they made something like 100 PCs for their friends and other, because those days it was a small, dirty group of people who belonged to clubs, like computer clubs, and they made about 100 for their, for their friends and, and associates. And they kind of felt that we might as well make a business out of it since we're making so many, we can't do them all by hand anyway. And then they came across a businessman, the rest is history. So he was basically saying they started with a passion and out of that passion, it will grow to something bigger and bigger and become a business. In other words, by immersion, immersion is the way forward. So what are you going to do about your goals? Forget the resolutions, the goals. Sit down with a pen and paper and think of about 10 things you'd like to achieve this year, okay? and start thinking, how can I live those 10 things? Okay, now some of them might be super aspiration. If you're having things like, I want to 10X my income, I want to become a millionaire, I want to become a pop star, I want to become a famous business person, I wouldn't really recommend them as goals because they're ridiculous. Instead, think of, say for example, I want to be a pop star, right? Well, I got to focus on developing those skill sets, meeting those people, etc. Let's say I want to crack a competitive exam. Well, I'll go to Giants and Coaching Center and I'm going to dedicate my life 100% to doing that. Let's say I want to develop my career. Well, I have to assess where my career is at. Do I need to do new courses, new trainings? Do I need to change job? If I need a change job, do I need coaching to get me to that new job? Uh, what kind of career path? A very simple thing to do in a job would be to go to your immediate boss and ask them, hey boss, how do I progress my career in this organization? They have to give you an answer, some sort of answer. Start getting some idea what you want to achieve. Don't think in terms of, don't think in terms of having $10 million in the bank or super fame or whatever. Think instead of the activities and the final outcome and how do I start progressing? And don't put a time frame. And this is where I think people make a mistake. This idea of reverse engineering sounds great. I'm going to reverse engineering. I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to do it in five years. And all I have to do is in four years, I have 2.5. In three years, I have 750,000. Two years, I have 370,000. One year, I have 175,000. It's just silly, okay? Don't think of these ridiculous outcomes. Let the universe work on the outcomes. You strive towards your goals before assessing what do I want to achieve. Forget about a money figure. I don't believe in it. I don't think it works. Forget about a money figure. Forget about whether you're an icon or not. I'll give you another example. There's plenty of, say, the music industry is using as examples. There's plenty of people who wanted to be a pop star and weren't very satisfied with the result. I remember when I was a young guy, I used to uh, uh, follow a band um, uh, called Ultravox, and there was a uh, the kind of lead singer and guitarist. There was a guy called Midjur. And Mitchell was a Scottish guy, and he actually had been a teen idol in Scotland, had number one hits up there, and at the end of it, he felt empty, because although he had that external success, he said, oh, I had number one hit, he, he was just like, you know, manufactured, put up there. And then when he joined Ultravox, uh, he did his own thing, and he became again a great success at Ultravox, but he felt satisfied because he did it. So it's not about being super famous, super rich, top this, top that. It doesn't really matter. What matters is striving towards becoming the person you want to become, living the life that you would like to lead, and working towards that life. And not worry about the exact fine details. It doesn't matter if you're the richest person or the tenth richest person. It doesn't matter if you score that uh, competitive exam, you're coming first in the country, 
or you just made the grade and got that, that, that course or that job that you wanted. It doesn't really matter if you weigh 160 pounds or if you weigh 180 pounds, if you look the way you need to look. Does it really matter whether you're senior, senior manager or just senior manager? What does it matter? It's lifestyle. It's are you happy? Are you satisfied? Do you have enough money coming in? Do you feel a sense of satisfaction in what you're doing? Let the universe fill out the details. Instead, drop the resolutions, focus on goals. Ask yourself, is this a viable goal? Having some stupid figure in my head and trying to strive for it, like I want to be this position or I want to have this much money, it's kind of dumb. Rather think about why would I like that much money? Why would I like that, that job profile, etc.? And start working towards the job profile. Don't worry about the money. Forget the money. Work about the job profile. Work about the lifestyle. Work about self-fulfillment. And start immersing yourself in that. And think in terms of the journey rather than thinking about, I resolve to force myself to be X, Y, and Z. Think about that, folks. Get the resolutions, go for the goals. Don't worry about silly things like an exact financial figure or an exact title. Let the universe sort it out for you and you start immersing yourself and working towards the activities that would make you that successful person, whether it's this time next year or five or six years from now. Who gives it that? Why does it have to be this year? It's silly. Or this five year goal or this reverse engineering goal. Strive towards finding out what you want to do and becoming the kind of person that will be the fulfillment of those goals. Best of luck in 2023. Hope you like this video. If you do, like and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.